This is the Cambridge English First Listening Test, Test 4. I'm going to give you the instructions for this test. I'll introduce each part of the test and give you time to look at the questions. At the start of each piece, you will hear this sound. You'll hear each piece twice. Remember, while you're listening, write your answers on the question paper. You'll have five minutes at the end of the test to copy your answers onto the separate answer sheet. There will now be a pause. Please ask any questions now because you must not speak during the test. Now open your question paper and look at part one. You'll hear people talking in eight different situations. For questions one to eight, choose the best answer. A, B, or C. Question one. You hear a man talking about an ancient object he found in the ground. It sounds silly, I know, but I'd never seen anything like that before, and I just thought it was the lid of a coffee pot or something. It was disc-shaped and decorated with a snake's head on top. I was curious as I couldn't identify it, so I went along to show it to the historian in the museum in town. She looked at it and went very quiet. It was at that point I realised that I'd found something really special. She entered it into a register of local historical finds and then sent it off to the National Museum, and it's still there now, in an exhibition. It sounds silly, I know, but I'd never seen anything like that before, and I just thought it was the lid of a coffee pot or something. It was disc-shaped and decorated with a snake's head on top. I was curious as I couldn't identify it, so I went along to show it to the historian in the museum in town. She looked at it and went very quiet. It was at that point I realised that I'd found something really special. She entered it into a register of local historical finds and then sent it off to the National Museum, and it's still there now, in an exhibition. Question 2. You hear two friends talking about advertising. Have you seen that new mobile phone ad? Oh, yeah, it's everywhere. It's quite fun, though I can't say I feel that way about most advertisements. Some of them are very clever, though, aren't they? Yes, when it comes to persuading people, they can't live without stuff that's actually completely useless. <laughs> or at least they usually already have something just as good, so why replace it? But it's interesting to know what's out there, isn't it? Well, I'd say there are better ways of finding out about whether new products are any good than believing an ad that's cost millions to make. Yeah, maybe. But they don't do any harm, really. Have you seen that new mobile phone ad? Oh, yeah, it's everywhere. It's quite fun, though I can't say I feel that way about most advertisements. Some of them are very clever, though, aren't they? Yes, when it comes to persuading people, they can't live without stuff that's actually completely useless. <laughs> or at least they usually already have something just as good, so why replace it? But it's interesting to know what's out there, isn't it? Well, I'd say there are better ways of finding out about whether new products are any good than believing an ad that's cost millions to make. Yeah, maybe. But they don't do any harm, really. Question 3. You hear an actor talking about her career. I went for an audition to get into drama school because I'd always wanted to be an actor. Anyway, they turned me down, which was a major obstacle. While I was trying to decide what to do next with my life, I went out for a meal with an old friend of mine who's a successful actor to ask her for some advice. So we were sitting in this restaurant chatting away when a film director came up to say hello. My friend had worked with him on a film and introduced me. A few days later, the director just phoned up and offered me a role in his next film. 
I went for an audition to get into drama school because I'd always wanted to be an actor. Anyway, they turned me down, which was a major obstacle. While I was trying to decide what to do next with my life, I went out for a meal with an old friend of mine who's a successful actor to ask her for some advice. So we were sitting in this restaurant chatting away when a film director came up to say hello. My friend had worked with him on a film and introduced me. A few days later, the director just phoned up and offered me a role in his next film. Question 4. You hear a tour guide telling a group of tourists about a view. Let me just stop here to enable you to savour the spectacular view. So, over to your left, if you look down, you can see a little circular wood. Well, that's quite a famous landmark locally, because the poet Francis Alder actually used to have a cabin in that wood. Now, down in the valley below there, you can make out the River Thorn at its widest point, which Alder actually wrote about in many of his poems we all read when we were at school. Then, if you look to halfway up the hill, I'm sure you can see a large green area known as Callaway Park that's popular with young families. Let me just stop here to enable you to savour the spectacular view. So, over to your left, if you look down, you can see a little circular wood. Well, that's quite a famous landmark locally because the poet Francis Alder actually used to have a cabin in that wood. Now, down in the valley below there, you can make out the River Thorn at its widest point, which Alder actually wrote about in many of his poems we all read when we were at school. Then, if you look to halfway up the hill, I'm sure you can see a large green area known as Callaway Park that's popular with young families. Question 5. You hear a man talking to a friend about a presentation he has just given. So, how did your presentation go? Pretty well, I think. And judging by the number of people there, I'd pick the right topic. It's an area of law that's very relevant at the moment, and that was reflected in the size of the audience, so I needn't have worried on that score. All that practising in front of the mirror paid off, as did all that work I did recording myself and making sure I could easily be heard at the back of the room. I was quite well prepared for the questions, though of course there were a couple I hadn't expected. There always are. So, how did your presentation go? Pretty well, I think. And judging by the number of people there, I'd pick the right topic. It's an area of law that's very relevant at the moment, and that was reflected in the size of the audience, so I needn't have worried on that score. All that practising in front of the mirror paid off, as did all that work I did recording myself and making sure I could easily be heard at the back of the room. I was quite well prepared for the questions, though of course there were a couple I hadn't expected. There always are. Question 6. You hear two students talking about a careers talk they have just heard at college. That was a good careers talk, wasn't it? Well, yes and no. I mean, the speaker knew his stuff, but not much of it was new. We've already had two careers talks this year, covering most of the same topics. Mm, you have a point there. But he made some great jokes and held everyone's attention. There was no chatting in the back row or people checking their phones every five minutes. Actually, there was quite a lot of that. I think you just didn't notice. I did think he was funny, though. That was a good careers talk, wasn't it? Well, yes and no. I mean, the speaker knew his stuff, but not much of it was new. We've already had two careers talks this year, covering most of the same topics. Mm, you have a point there. But he made some great jokes and held everyone's attention. There was no chatting in the back row or people checking their phones every five minutes. Actually, there was quite a lot of that. I think you just didn't notice. I did think he was funny, though. Question 7. You hear an author of children's books talking about her work.
When I start writing a novel for children, my main aim is not to write a successful book. I write about things that I used to love reading about when I was their age. I've been writing novels for children for some years now, and I've come to realize that mystery is important, but what the children really want to read about is the young characters in the book. By solving a mystery, the characters have to build their relationships and solve problems together. So many writers try to teach children things too directly, but doing that just turns children off. When I start writing a novel for children, my main aim is not to write a successful book. I write about things that I used to love reading about when I was their age. I've been writing novels for children for some years now, and I've come to realize that mystery is important, but what the children really want to read about is the young characters in the book. By solving a mystery, the characters have to build their relationships and solve problems together. So many writers try to teach children things too directly, but doing that just turns children off. Question 8. You hear a man and a woman talking about older people learning languages. How are your mum's Spanish classes going? Oh, I'm not sure. She thinks she's too old to be doing them. The younger students learn so much quicker than her. Younger students do pick things up more quickly in terms of accent and so on, but I think older people have an advantage. They've learned to be efficient in how they spend their time, and they've also learned how to study. I bet your mum's grammar and vocabulary are better than the younger students. Anyway, there are so many apps and programs out there for learning languages, so people of any age can practice their skills whenever they want, even on the way to work. How are your mum's Spanish classes going? Oh, I'm not sure. She thinks she's too old to be doing them. The younger students learn so much quicker than her. Younger students do pick things up more quickly in terms of accent and so on, but I think older people have an advantage. They've learned to be efficient in how they spend their time, and they've also learned how to study. I bet your mum's grammar and vocabulary are better than the younger students. Anyway, there are so many apps and programs out there for learning languages, so people of any age can practice their skills whenever they want, even on the way to work. That's the end of part one. Now turn to part two.